Hello, this is Dr. Hana Asil, and today we're talking about states of matter. This is the first chapter in the IGCSE chemistry. And you should know that matter exists in three states, solid, liquids, and gases. And in the IGCSE, you're required to know the separation of the particles, the arrangement of the particles, and the movement of the particles. So for a solid, what is the separation between the particles? We say they are closed packed. Closed packed means they're all touching each other, very, very near to each other. In liquids, the particles are near to each other, and we say they are in clusters, in groups where in some places they're touching and in some places they're not touching. For a gas, the particles are far apart. Now, arrangement of the particles, looking at the solid, the particles are arranged in regular rows. The liquid, we call them a random arrangement or sometimes an irregular arrangement, but this is called a random arrangement. In gases also, these are called a random arrangement. How do the particles move? Please remember, all particles are constantly moving. Do not say particles of a solid are not moving because they are, but the difference is for a solid, they are vibrating in a fixed position. But for liquids, the particles are moving around each other. For gases, the particles have a fast, free, random motion. Which one is compressible? Well, first of all, you should know that the word compressible means bringing the particles nearer to each other. In order to be able to bring particles nearer to each other, they should be originally a bit far apart. So the only ones that are compressible are the particles in a gas because that's where they're far apart. Which ones have fixed volume? The solid has a fixed volume. The liquid also has a fixed volume. But you should remember that the gases take the volume of the con uh, container or they fill the whole container. Which one has a fixed shape? The only one that has a fixed shape is the solid. Liquids will take the shape of the container. Gases will take the shape of the container. Okay, all of these are basic. You probably did it before. Now, change of state. Change of state, we need to be able to change from solids to liquid to gases or back from gas to liquid to solid. Remember that to have a solid, in order to change it to a liquid, you need to heat it. When you heat a solid, it changes to a liquid. This is called melting. So if he says, what is meant by melting? Melting is the change of state from solid to liquid. Then, if you're saying, when does this happen? This happens at a certain temperature, which we call the melting point. Now, if he says, what is the melting point? Please do not say it is the point. We call it melting point, or actually it should be called melting temperature, because it is the temperature at which a solid changes to liquid. So melting is just the change. Melting point is the temperature at which this change happens. Now, that means from solid to liquid, melting. What if we heat the liquid? At some point, it changes to gas. That is called boiling and also evaporation. And we'll talk about the difference between them. Because boiling is something that happens at a fixed temperature. So boiling is the change of state from liquid to gas at a specific temperature or at a fixed temperature. This will also happen at a certain temperature called the boiling point. So boiling point is the temperature at which the liquid changes to gas. But then you should remember also evaporation is also something that is liquid to gas. So evaporation is also the change from liquid to gas, but it happens at any temperature and it occurs only on the surface of the liquid. So this is why when you are defining boiling, if we say boiling, you cannot just say boiling is the change of state from liquid to gas and stop. Because the change of state from liquid to gas is boiling and it is also evaporation. So distinguish between them. Boiling is the change of state from liquid to gas at a fixed temperature, while evaporation happens at any temperature. If you want another difference, you realize that the boiling happens all through the liquid, but the evaporation happens only on the surface of the liquid. Then, going back from gas to liquid, we need to cool. So if I cool the gas particles, they change into 
liquid, this is called condensation. So what is meant by condensation? It is the change of state from gas to liquid. Cool the liquid, it will become solid, and that is called freezing. Freezing is the change from liquid to solid. Now, some solids, when you heat them, they change directly to gas. And then when you cool the gas, it changes directly to solid. That is called sublimation. So sublimation is the change from solid to gas or gas to solid without passing through the liquid state. Remember that only some substances do sublimation. Usually, if you have a solid, it should melt and become a liquid and then boil and become a gas. So let's look at some of these questions. This question says the three states of matter are solid, liquid, and gas. The diagram shows how the particles are arranged in each of these states. He has arrows and he's telling you what is X, what is Y, and what is Z. Please notice the direction of the arrow. So X is from liquid to gas, that is boiling. Remember, you can also say that X is evaporation. It's also the change from liquid to gas. Then, but we usually write it actually as boiling, not evaporation. Um, changing Y is changing from gas to liquid. Changing from gas to liquid is condensation. From liquid to solid. So Z is from liquid to solid. That is freezing. This question says... Uh, the diagram shows a kettle of boiling water. As the water vapor boils, it turns into droplets of liquid water. The change of state when water vapor changes into liquid. So he has vapor. Remember that water vapor is the gaseous state of water. So water as a gas is water vapor or what we call steam. Changing that into a liquid is called which one? Condensation. That is correct. Okay, and then you need to know, you need to be able to explain what happens during melting or during boiling. Remember, in these cases, you're heating. So if you heat the solid, it changes to liquid, that's melting. If you heat the liquid, it changes to uh, gas, that's boiling. So when a substance is heated, what happens? The particles gain kinetic energy. Because they gain kinetic energy, they move faster. And when they move faster, they can overcome the attraction forces between them and move further apart. So when you explain this, you need to explain it in this order. First, particles gain kinetic energy. Move faster, overcome the attraction forces between them, and move further apart. The other ha way happens if you're going from condensing or freezing. So if you're going from gas to liquid or from liquid to solid, you're cooling it. And when a substance is cooled, the opposite happens. Particles lose kinetic energy, move slower, come nearer to each other. Another thing that you're supposed to know is if a substance has a certain state at a certain temperature, what does that tell you about its melting point or its boiling point? Or the other way around, if I tell you that something has a melting point at a certain temperature, a boiling point at a certain temperature, is it a solid, a liquid, or a gas? So, if you have something that's a solid at room temperature, and you should know that room temperature is regarded as 20 degrees Celsius or 25 degrees Celsius. So at room temperature, at about 20 degrees Celsius, if a substance is solid, does that mean its melting point is high or low? Well, at room temperature, at 20, if it is a solid, that means it has not melted yet. That means its melting point is high. And if its melting point is high, then its boiling point also is high. So a solid at room temperature has a high melting point and a higher boiling point. And that means if I tell you that something has a high melting point, higher than room temperature, then at room temperature it's a solid. What if a substance at room temperature is a liquid? That means that at room temperature, it has already melted. It has passed its melting point. 
and that means that its melting point is lower than the room temperature but then it hasn't boiled yet if it's still a liquid and it hasn't become a gas it has not boiled yet it has not passed its boiling point so that means its boiling point is hot what if something is a gas at room temperature if it's a gas at room temperature that means it has already melted and it has already boiled and that means that the melting point and the boiling point are lower than room temperature so if he gives you a table that says the melting point is low the boiling point is low what is the state at room temperature it is a gas then we need to know what is diffusion and diffusion is defined as the movement of particles from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration down the concentration gradient let's understand that. so if i have a particle of potassium permanganate crystal i put a particle of potassium permanganate crystal at the bottom of a beaker of water um, you should know that potassium permanganate is a purple uh, solid now I leave it at the bottom of the beaker and wait to see what happens. You will find that the particles are a lot. You have a lot of potassium permanganate at the bottom there. So we call that an area of high concentration. At the top of the water, there is no potassium permanganate or very little potassium permanganate. So we say that's an area of low concentration. Now the particles will move from where there's a lot of them so from area of high concentration to an area where there is very little of it so it is area of low concentration and this gradual change in concentration from where it's high to where it's low is called the concentration grid so the particles will move from high concentration to low concentration until what until they are equally distributed in all the liquid so all the water takes that purple color we can also have diffusion of particles of bromine for example in air but bromine originally is a liquid so i put a little bit of bromine liquid at the bottom of that jar and i remove the cover that is separating the two jars after some time you will find that the brown color of the bromine has spread through all the the two jars together now what has happened you have to realize that what has happened are actually two things the liquid bromine changed into vapor and then the vapor particles or the gaseous particles moved from area of high concentration to area of low concentration so when you're trying to explain what happened in here you should realize that what happens is the particles of liquid bromine gain kinetic energy they move faster overcome the attraction forces between them so they move further apart and they change into a gas and then this gas needs to move from area of high concentration to area of low concentration so this is the process of diffusion so at the end both jars have that brown color of bromine I can also have diffusion of a liquid in a liquid. So if I put drops of ink, for example, in a bowl of water, uh, the color will slowly spread. So in diffusion, the, what is happening is the particles are slowly spreading and the whole uh, bowl of water will have that color of the ink. Another example is if I have what we call an open-ended tube, so this is a tube that is open from both ends. On one end, I put a cotton wool with ammonia. Can you realize that the NH3 is ammonia? On the other end, I put a cotton wool with hydro hydrochloric acid, that is the HCl, and I leave them. Of course, the ammonia, we have a lot on the left side. It will start to move from area of high concentration to area of low concentration. Now, the HCl particles are a lot on the right side. They start to move from the area of high concentration to low concentration. At some point, they're going to meet. And when ammonia and hydrogen chloride or HCl uh, join together, they form ammonium 
chloride, which is a white solid, or it will form as a white cloud. Now, if the particles are moving at the same rate, they should actually move and join at the middle. They should meet at the middle. But what we find is they don't meet at the middle. They will meet nearer to the HCl. So what does that tell you? It tells you that the particles of ammonia are moving very fast. The particles of HCl are moving slower, so they meet nearer to the HCl than to the NH3. So the rate of diffusion, how fast are the particles moving, will depend on, first of all, the mass of the particles. The mass, if we uh, remember how to calculate the molecular mass of something, NH3, if you look at the periodic table, the N has a mass of 14. Um, the hydrogens, each of them has a mass of 1. So the NH3 actually has a total molecular mass of 17. The HCl, the chlorine alone, has a mass of 35.5. So the HCl has 36.5. So the point is, the ammonia particles are much lighter, lower molecular mass, so they diffuse faster. So if you ask me, why is it that the particles are meeting nearer to the HCl? This is because the ammonia particles are lighter, lower molecular mass, move faster. Now, another thing that determines the rate of diffusion is the energy. So, if I am supposed to hold this test tube with my hand, then the temperature of my hand will affect the uh, rate at which the particles are moving. If it is warmer, then the particles will move faster. So, remember that at higher temperature, the particles have more kinetic energy and they would diffuse faster. Another factor that determines how fast the particles move is the nature of the medium. So the diffusion is usually faster when it is going through gases than when it is going through liquids. Remember, there is no diffusion inside solid. We do not say that particles diffuse inside solid. They can diffuse in gases and they can diffuse in liquids, but they do not diffuse in solid. So let's see this. Uh, example of a question, it says a student places a few purple crystals at the bottom of a beaker containing some cold water, the crystals start to dissolve, which process occurs as the crystals dissolve? So of course, as the crystals dissolve, the color becomes purple and that means that the process of diffusion is happening. So my answer is, thank you for listening and um, I hope that these videos help you to understand these topics much better. Thank you.